What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Flutter. So we're at day six of hashtag 30 days of Flutter. That means we're working with Flutter for 30 days straight. Oh yes. And we are going to be building out a picture carousel. So for the very first time, we're going to actually be working with images that are loaded into our project. We're going to be displaying them on the screen and then we're going to be dis well, we're going to be adding those images to a carousel. So a carousel is essentially um, like a slider view that essentially will show your picture and then it will go to the next one and it could actually do that functionality automatically and we're going to be using a third party dependency to get that working so with all that said let's go ahead and jump right on in and as you can see we're going to start off at pub.dev right so let's go ahead and search for carousel slider carousel slider I always have a hard time spelling that one and it's going to be this one right here at the top and um you know we got this carousel slider right here and we can see a little bit of an implementation detail down here where it's just showing like all you really need to do is implement the carousel slider and then um, some options you provide it some type of list you map over that list and then um, you will use a builder in order to like get the the width of the screen we're going to talk about all this stuff but it's 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 relatively simple to implement so now we're going to head over to the installing section we're going to grab that dependency, head over to our very basic app, go to the pubspec.yaml, add it in as a dependency at the right level, save that, head back over to the main.dart, and down here in our scaffold, this is where we're going to be displaying it. Now, I already know that it's going to be going all the way to the top because we're not going to actually place this thing in the center. If you want to put it in the center, I challenge you to do that. You should know how to do that by now, but I'm going to just keep it up at the top. Just no apparent reason to put it in the center. So since I'm going to have it at the top, let's go ahead and wrap this thing in a safe area. All right. So as you can see, I have my scaffold. I have the body for the scaffold being the safe area. And then I have the carousel slider. So two things that it's mentioning that are absolutely mandatory are the items and the options. I'm actually going to change the ordering of these just because options is going to be a single line and we're not really going to do much to it but the items is going to be much more drawn out it's going to be like a whole entire function so let's go ahead and get our options going and then we'll and then i'll start talking about the the items all right so carousel options you could just pass in an instance of this object we don't need to pass anything to it we just need to make sure that we do pass an instance of it now there are all kinds of properties on this and we're and we're not going to really change much here um we are going to we are going to change one thing though, which is this autoplay um, property right here. So what we want to do is we want the pictures to show automatically. So it's going to show the first one. Then after a couple seconds, it's going to show the next one and it's going to just do these transitions for us manually. So let's go ahead and add an autoplay. There we go. So simple enough. Next, what we need are items. So when we're working with these images, what we're going to do is we're going to import them into our project and we're going to be working with image paths. So before we actually do the import of the images, let's get our um, our list going so that we can actually know what items we're going to be working with. All right. So as you can see here, I just have this um, this list of strings right here, right? It's a list of like strings which is just it has a single empty string we're going to fix that right now but when we want to work with the image we have to get the image path and we have to pass it in as a string so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and add in some images all right so here you can see i have my five different images and these are just like the different thumbnails that i have for each of these different days that we um had these uh videos and now what i want to do is over here in the in the browser the explorer what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to add a new folder now you can call this folder whatever you want but i'm going to call mine images it just makes sense to have images inside of an images folder i mean i don't know how much self-explanatory things that you want me to do or how crazy you want me to make it but yeah call it whatever you want so then i grab these images that are in finder i drag them over here to this folder and now they are part of my project and as you can see they're just in this folder now that we have those images inside of our project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our pubspec.yaml file again. We're going to scroll down and we're looking for this section under Flutter right here. Um, you can find it under the, the dev dependencies and then you're going to have this Flutter section. And then you're going to see the section that's commented out. So if you do command and then 
forward slash, you'll be able to uncomment this. Now what it's saying is whatever the folder is called, um, that's you're going to have to include that in the path to the image. So we have our assets, you know, an image is an asset and then you need to specify which folder it's in. So I called mine images, so I'm just going to keep that the same, but then I need to include all the different images right here. So I could put day one right here and then I could put day two and you're going to also need to include like the extensions, which are dot PNG, right? So you could do it this way, but if you, don't plan on like excluding anything from this images folder. Like if you want to keep all these images that are in the project as part of something that ships, um, you know, you can just simply do this and you can just give it the folder name with the slash after it. And that will actually import all the images into your project. So since we're going to keep all these images in our project and we don't want to exclude anything, I'll just do it like this. Um, you could do it the other way where it's more explicit. That's fine too. But um, now what we need to do is we need to go over to our main and in our image paths, we're going to do essentially that very same thing where we're going to specify what the path is to the image that we actually want to use. So let's go ahead and add in all five of those. All right. So as you can see here, I have all five of my image paths. Now, if you don't have any images on your computer for whatever reason and you, you can't think of something to use, you can go to the repo, which I have a link down in the description. You can clone the, the repo or you could just simply, you know, pull up these images and then download them in, onto your computer and use them however you want to do it. But essentially you'll have, you'll have the access to these images if you want to do exactly what I'm doing here. Anyways, uh, now that we have our image paths, what we want to do is we want to pass that into our items. Now the items is expecting a list of widgets. So we can't just pass in image paths because this is a list of strings, right? And what we need is a list of widgets, a list of like views, essentially something that can actually be view viewed as like a view, <laughs> so render it as a view. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, image paths, right? We'll do image paths, but then we'll do this map function. So map is considered, you'll hear this, uh, th this term thrown around a lot is a higher order function. And all that means is that it's a function that does something, um, for you. Uh, and it's kind of already, uh, thought out and made for you. Essentially. I don't really know how to explain, explain it in, in, in more layman's terms, but essentially it just takes one element and it converts it into another element. So the first ele the element that we're working with is a string, right? So we have a list of strings. When we use map, what we're going to be doing internally is essentially like a for loop, right? We're going to be iterating through this list. So we're going to do something with this. We're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to do the same thing with this. So we're going to write the logic of what we want to do with each of these elements. And you can see that each of those elements is represented with this E right now. But to make it a little bit clearer, I'll call it image path. So we have a list of image paths, plural, and then each of these things is an image path, uh, singular, right? So then what we want to do is we want to pass it into some type of function that's going to turn it into a widget. That's the entire goal here. Now, if we didn't really care about the, the actual image, then we could just do something as simple as like returning returning um, a text widget, right? And that would be like something that's viewable and we could pass in image path because the image path is a string and this will turn it into, um, you know, essentially a list of widgets. Now, the reason why we have this like nasty, ugly little red squiggly is because what we have right now is it's turning it into an iterable. Like, so when you have a map, it's going to automatically turn it into an iterable. Um, object and what we want to do is we want to just say dot to list so at the end of that I think I hit the wrong one I hit that wrong paren so we'll do do dot to list at the end of this block of um, map right so it'll take this iterable which is a iterable of strings let's see if I could get it to pull up right here see iterable of whatever you um, are returning essentially and in our case it's an iterable of text widgets and we're going to turn that iterable into a list of text widgets so then we would essentially be showing you know 
a text view for each of these. Now that's not what we want, and I'm not gonna go through that here. Um, if you're following along, feel free, free to run the code, but um, we're not gonna stop right there. So what we actually wanna do is we want to turn this into images. So the way that we do that is we simply call image, and we're gonna be working with assets, so we'll do the dot .asset uh, constructor, and then we'll just pass in a, um, a image path right there. So now what we're doing is we have the carousel, um, we're map and we have the image paths and we're mapping over them. We get an image path for each of these images. And then with, within the carousel, or I mean, within the map, we are turning them into image assets. So let's go ahead and run that and let's see what it looks like so far. All right, and there we go. And as you can see, we have a uh, build your first app. Look, at, it's already going because we already added in that carousel option, the autoplay. Isn't that so neat? Like it's working. So that's really cool. Um, now what we can do is because like they're all kind of touching each other and it's like, Ugh, don't touch me, I'm claustrophobic. You know, let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding to each of these just so that they have, you know, some, some room to, to breathe. All right, and there we go. And as you can see, I added some padding and that's looking so much nicer. So that's pretty much all we really had to do. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about when you're working with these images. Now, my images just happen to take up most of the screen, but there are going to be times where you're gonna be working with images, especially you at home, if you're working with like these different size images and you need them to fit into a specific scale. Now, I don't have any like mismatch shaped images and I didn't make any for this tutorial, unfortunately, but I'm gonna show you how to get around that. So instead of using padding, a padding widget, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually wrap this image asset in a container instead. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a media query. Now the media query will let us get the width of our screen and then we'll be able to do some calculations based off of that. So let's do that now. All right, so here we go. So I took my image asset and I took it out of the padding. I then wrapped it with a container and that container I actually wrapped with a builder. The reason why we're wrapping it with a builder is just because we need to have access to the context. Now you can always just pull the context out of thin air most of the time when you're working inside of like a, a widget tree, but you don't necessarily know exactly if the context is the exact one that you want. So when you add a builder to the, um, to the widget, uh, to the widget tree, then you actually have a relevant context and that context we're using in order to get the media query of that context. We do that, we get the size of that media query and then we get the width. And that allows me to specify the width of the container to be the width of the screen. Now, like I said, you're not gonna see any change in mine, but it, like it, but if you're working with images that are of different sizes and things like that, and you have a much more complicated layout and UI, then this is something that you're more likely to run into. So I just wanted to point that out. And then we still have like our padding, so it still has like, we can breathe, right? So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for today. Um, you know, we went over how to get images into your project and actually display them onto the screen. I also showed you how to get them, you know, scrolling, looking real nice, right? With the carousel slider. And then we talked a little bit about builders, context, and then media queries. So if you found this video helpful and informative, if you could please like and subscribe, it would really make me feel so good on the inside. And then if you also could share it, that would also be cool. So I would like to help as many people as possible. You know, a lot of work goes into these videos, trust me. But that's gonna be it for today. Thank you again for your time. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.